Hey guys, we are back with some more New Jersey Devils franchise mode. And in the last one, we got eliminated in the playoffs by the Florida Panthers in, I believe, six games. Yep, we lost in overtime in game number six. We did beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in seven. But unfortunately, Florida got the first game. We took the next two, but then it was all Florida from there. They shut us out in game number four. They got the best of us 5-2 in game number five, and then obviously took it to overtime in game number six, but we couldn't amount that to much. So now as we go up to the awards and the draft lottery results, the Chicago Blackhawks from the New York Rangers get the first overall pick, then Montreal, Vancouver, Columbus, Nashville, Detroit, Washington, LA, Ottawa, Minnesota, St. Louis, Anaheim, Buffalo, Colorado, and Dallas is the order for the draft lottery. Now, before we go into the draft, there are a couple of guys who I want to re-sign before the resize stage. Probably should have done that before <laughs> simulating all those days, but Jesper Boquist is one of them. He is now an 85 overall. I don't know if that's from morale growth or from... Uh, statistical growth or just natural growth, I would imagine either morale or statistical, considering he did have a pretty good year this past year. He had 52 points, and the majority of that, he was on the third line. It wasn't until, like, with 10 games remaining that we moved him onto the second line, but we do, in fact, want to get him back. He wants one year for 4.3. I want to give him three years. I want to see if I can get him for 4.3. Two, because he did have that one year, I believe it was the year before this year, where he only had 20-something points, 24, 25 points, and that was his sophomore season, so I guess he really hit the sophomore slump, because his rookie year, he was fantastic, 40, 45 points, I believe it was, and this past year, 52, so if he could stay consistent with his first year and this past year, then this 4.2 for three years is definitely worth it. But that's a gamble that I'm willing to take because he is definitely one of our better offensive players. We also have to re-sign Falk and Bellows. I will definitely re-sign Falk. He was a pretty key part of our defensive core last year. I don't want to give him three years, though. I think at most I give him two. At the start of next year, he's going to be 33. Yeah, two years is about right for him. We'll take him down to... We'll try to take him down anyway to 6.2. Yeah, well, well, we'll try for 6.1. We don't have a whole lot of time to negotiate here before the start of the resign stage, so we'll go for 6.1 at two years for Justin Falk. And for Bellows, he wants 3.1 for three years. He was pretty good last year. He had a increased ice time. And he also had 36 points on the third line. Great physically. One of our most physical guys. And his takeaway to giveaway ratio wasn't fantastic. But he's definitely somebody who I want back. So we'll give him two years instead of three. And instead of this salary, we'll give him 2.75 for two years. Kyle Palmieri also needs to be re-signed. However, he does have that top nine potential. Meaning he might drop down. I'm definitely not giving him four years. At most, it's going to be two, preferably one for Kyle Palmieri. He is asking for more money than he is currently making. So if I could take him down to four mil to start out for one year, I'd love it if he could sign for that. And the awards, the Stanley Cup goes to the Colorado Avalanche for a second year in a row, back to back. I believe that is the first time we have seen this in this GM mode. President's Trophy goes to the Arizona Coyotes, and it was Colorado versus Tampa in the finals. And the individual awards, the Art Ross goes to Cole Caulfield, the Hart goes to T. Ranta of the Avalanche, right, that's that franchise player <laughs> that they got in the draft. Yeah, looks like he's pretty good. Norris goes to Hedman, the Lady Bing goes to Kane, the Calder goes to A. Bellamare of the Habs. The Conn Smythe also goes to Ranta. Yeah, it was safe to say he was pretty good. Vesna goes to Shesterkin. The Jennings goes to Kemper. The Masterton goes to Quinn Hughes. The Jack Adams goes to L. McNeely of the Vegas Golden Knights. The Selkie goes to Zabanajad. The Ted Lindsay Award also goes to Ranta. And the Maurice Richard goes to Cole Caulfield. Retired players, you have Getzlaff, Stahl, Koivu, Steen, Yandel, Bufflin, Horkvist, Ryan, Akpozo, Zuccarello, Zajac is finally retiring. You knew it was going to happen. At least he won his Stanley Cup. 
with us a couple a few years ago. A total of 1,206 games played, 207 goals, 363 assists, and 570 points. I believe that would put him third on the all-time Devils scoring list. So good to see him right off with that Stanley Cup. Tyler Bozak as well, uh, yeah, another former New Jersey Devil briefly, only for three games, but still he was part of our franchise for a little bit there. Niskanen, Goligoski, Soderberg, Sutter, Grabner, also a New Jersey Devils legend, Abdulkader, Helm, Boychuk, Martin, Hayes, also a New Jersey Devils legend, coincidentally. So a bunch of New Jersey Devils legends retiring in this draft. Or not in this draft, what am I saying? In this retirement stage. And as far as goaltenders go, you have Mark andre Fleury, Miller, Halak, Talbot, Grice, Hutton, Johnson, Darling, Hammond, and Svedberg. So that, that is about all the notables for goaltenders. And the following retired players are now coaches. Dustin Bufflin and Ryan Getzloff for their respective teams are now coaches. And the following retired players are now scouts. Johnny Boychuk, Darren Helm, Patrick Hornquist, and Ryan Miller. Let's see, do we have any coach retirements of our own? I don't think so. No, we do not. So there were a couple of guys that I had my eyes on. We have enough forwards, I think. We really need to target a defenseman. As we as we saw earlier, when we were making a trade for Grubauer, we really don't have any quality prospects in the system. Everyone who was going to make the jump to the NHL at this point, has already made it to the NHL. And there are a couple of defensemen that I am looking at. Igor Brzgalov is one of them. He's a defensive defenseman, six foot five. Uh, he's three years away from the NHL. So if we're looking for a pure defensive defenseman, he's probably our guy. But there's someone down here going 39th, supposedly. Caden Lankow, he's already ready for the NHL. A, A minus, A minus, A minus, A minus, and B. So if we want someone who is already NHL ready, and he's a two-way defenseman as well, it's not like he's an offensive defenseman. This isn't exactly the same situation as someone like Kirill Zhamnov, who he was obviously NHL ready right away as well, but he was an offensive defenseman, so for him, it was either offense or bust. But for Lankow, being a two-way defenseman, even if he doesn't pan out offensively, which it looks like he may actually be pretty good offensively based off what we're seeing here with his strengths and his shooting at an A, he could still be serviceable defensively. Now, unfortunately, we do not have a second round pick, so we either have to take Lankow with our first or we have to trade up for a second round pick with our third and then plus another pick or a prospect or something like that. So we're in the draft now, the Blackhawks are picking first. We will sim up to our pick. I have no interest in trading up in the first round. And let's see who goes first overall. That would be a medium franchise center in Kale Dahl going to the Chicago Blackhawks. My goodness. Visakis, Jocelyn, Lampman, Valquette. So we're at our pick now. You have LaCosta, you have Long, and these two, again, we don't really need forwards when you consider our already young group of forwards that we have. I mean, of course, you have the aging Taylor Hall, Gusev, he's 31, Hall is 32, who else is aging? Paul Mary, who is 33. So you got a few wingers there that are up there in age, but for the most part, your core is actually pretty set. You got Heischer, who's 25, Hughes is 23, Lundell is 22, Boakvist is 25, Brad is 25, Bellows is 26, Bykov, who we just drafted earlier, he's 18 still, he'll turn 19 before the start of the season, Bajan is 20, Pushkarev is 20, we could see some pretty good growth out of him, Dubay is 25, for the most part, we have a very young forward core, I don't feel that's our necessity to focus on that, but as far as defense goes, you have P.K. Subban, who's 35, you have Severson, who's 29, you have Falk, who is 32, and it looks like his value's gone way down there, but that's probably because yeah, he only has one year left on his deal. But that being said, we don't have the amount of young players on defense that we do uh, forward-wise, and then we also don't have too many quality for, uh, defensive prospects. So that is why we are going for a defenseman out of this first round at the very least. As far as goaltenders go, you have Spezza and Wingles. 
Now, Wingles, I'm kind of hopeful for because he's already a 72 overall at 21 years of age. Hopefully, he gets a good jump over the offseason. And Spezza, he did not have the greatest season this past year, but he did have a pretty good year his draft year with a 926 save percentage. So, hopefully, he can get back to that and have a pretty solid growth year. But that being said, it wouldn't hurt to pick up a goalie prospect either. So, we have to decide pretty quickly here, given that we have 45 seconds left, uh, or we could technically call a timeout, but I'm going to make sure that we don't run out of time here. It's either going to be Lankow or Burzgalov. I think the least amount of risk involved would be Lankow, for sure, because he's already NHL ready, and once again, even if he busts offensively, he'll likely still be pretty good defensively. So we will be taking Caden Lankow with our first round pick. Welcome to the New Jersey Devils. He is a 77 overall. Now, I don't think he'll be cracking the NHL right away. He is definitely a situation where I think I want to play him in the AHL for a full year, as opposed to where we what we did with Kirill Jamnov, where we only played him for a good portion of the season, then called him up. Part of me just wants to wait for a full year for Caden Lankow just to see how he turns out. Maybe he even grows in potential from dominating in the AHL. You never know. So I think that's the plan for Caden Lankow. But nonetheless, he should be a pretty big part of our team within the next couple of years. So we are going to sim to pick number 81. There's no need to trade for a second round pick since he's the one who I would have wanted to take with a second round pick anyway. So it appears the only decent prospects that we have left who are completely scouted are Zykov, an offensive defenseman, who, again, we do need a defenseman, so maybe we consider him, who's got that low top four, and then Brendan Bruce, a forward who has that low top six, and is also three years away. Six foot three, uh, Bruce is going 82, and the defenseman Zykov is going 87. I think we'll take the defenseman Zykov, you get a two-way defenseman, and you get an offensive defenseman. And once again, we just really need to replenish our defensive prospect pool. So welcome to the New Jersey Devils, Maxim Zykov. Man, the scouts really drop the ball when it comes to depth scouting. I mean, obviously, I'm sending them out a lot of the time. But I try to, you know, send them out to more than just the first and second round picks. I try to send them out to uh, guys who are going in the 200s as well. So it's definitely not my fault as to why we have so few options here. So we're just going to have to <laughs> we're just going to have to work with what the game's given us here, I suppose, because again, I I sent out the scout whenever I had to and it, it's just yeah, it is kind of brutal here. So we're just going to have to take a shot in the dark and hope for the best. There is a medium starter goaltender prospect, but he's five years away. And for me, goaltender prospects, if they don't have that medium elite and they're five years away, that's a bit of a project. So I think we'll pass on him. And they really don't have too much value anyway, especially since the value of goaltenders in this game was decreased significantly. So I think we'll take a chance on someone who might be a medium elite. And Jaden Clarkson, he's a goaltender. However, he's ranked 136. And he's got the two-bar medium elite, so maybe he's a medium elite. Probably not, but we'll just try anyway. He's a 50 overall, so unlucky with the overall. But if he's a medium elite, then he'll be worth it. So here we are going to take Tony Skewen. His rank movement is going up, and there's really not much left. <laughs> so we're just going to go based off that from here on out pretty much. And he's a 58 overall, so it'll take roughly four years to get to the NHL if he gets there. But we'll see what his potential is because as of right now, it's an AHL top six low with the one bar. So I think, to be honest, we're just going to take the highest ranked here. Tuomas Martikainen, welcome to the New Jersey Devils. And yeah, input lag because, of course, there is. There you go. 56 overall. And next pick, we will take Pierre Plus. He is a 58 overall. Round number six, we may as well take the starting goaltender. He's still there. So why not at this point? And round number seven, we will take the defenseman from Medicine Hat, Cameron Rita. So welcome to the New Jersey Devils, Lankow, Zykov, Clarkson, Skuin, Martikainen, Plus, Klein, and Rita. And Falk has renewed, Palmieri has renewed, Bellows has renewed, Bokvist has rejected. So UFA skaters, we have Zaka, he only wants one year for 1.475. I will definitely do that for him, we'll give him... 1.3 
our phase, we have Boquist and Haig. So Haig has actually dropped down to a 79, and all of a sudden, Boquist does not want to extend. I wonder if that was because of the <laughs> offer we gave him before. I'll take him to three years at, let's try for 4.7, since we offered him 4.2 before. We'll meet him somewhere in the middle of what he wants. And Nick Haig, uh, he wants four years at 4.3, and one year at 4.1. You know, we traded for Haig, and he was a good pickup, but I don't know if he's worth that much. That's a yikes. We might have to qualify Haig, and then just trade him, because <laughs> that... That's just way too much. Yeah, that's way too much. Ugh. And for goaltenders, you have Allen and Leonard. We will not be re-signing Allen. He can just get released there. And Robin Leonard, he does want to re-sign. He has not been great as of recent. What does he want? He wants two years for 3.9. If I could take him now to one year at 3.1, I'll give him that. Uh, I highly doubt he'll accept that. We'll go, you know what, we'll go for 3.3 .3 for one year. As far as unsigns go, you have Spezza, who we are going to leave where he is for right now. And for skaters, you have Bykov and Lankow. And actually, one thing I didn't realize about Lankow until just now is that he is going to be playing in the QMJHL next year. So I, I originally said the plan was to play him in the AHL. That is, in fact, not going to happen because he's too young to play in the AHL. And he's, in fact, in the CHL. So he will be more on the same development path as Michael Vukovic was, which is not a bad thing for sure. Because, I mean, you see how fast Vukovic grew. And, you know, maybe that's not the worst thing for Lankow there. So we'll leave him there where he is. And as for Bykov... Uh, I want to see how he grows over the offseason before we sign him. But if he's an 80 overall, we will definitely sign him. So our AHL head coach is back. And our AHL assistant coach is also back. And Letter has rejected due to the dollar value of the contract. Also due to the contract length. Zaka has renewed. White. Cormier. Brett Sini is not comfortable renewing with the amount of players competing for playing time in his position. Holscher. Bernard. Boquist has rejected, Zetterland, Pakula, Pushkarev, so Sini, we can release. So for one year, I'll give Leonard, he rejected 3.3, I'll give him 3.5. Boquist, I will give three years, what did we give him before, 4.7? I'll give him 5 mil for three years, because he's a really good player. He just needs to make, we just need to make sure that he gets consistent ice time and that he plays with the right players. Because if that happens, then he's a really good, he's good for 35 to 40 assists per season, as we see. But during that one, that one season in between is what makes me nervous. So hopefully he accepts this. As for Haig, I think we're going to leave him alone. We're going to have to just give him a tender qualifying offer and probably trade him because that's just way too much money as for what he wants he wants 4.1 for one year that's just not happening for a 79 overall i'm sorry and rob Leonard has re-signed uh, boquist has rejected so we're gonna have to <laughs> keep negotiating with boquist here he either wants one year so if we give him one year he'll still be an rfa so we'll give him the one year and you know what we'll just go we'll give him the one year for five mil so we're going on his length. Rejected still. All right. So we're <laughs> going to have to give him some more here. Try one year at 5.5. This is a bit of a risk, but he is an 85 overall. He did have a pretty good season last year, and he'll still be an RFA at the end of this deal. And if he does drop da back down to an 81 overall, then we can just give him less salary and no harm done. So one year for 5.5 sounds good to me. All right. Please accept Boquist. Thank you. <laughs> So I believe Haig is the only one left. So we will simulate to the last day and then tender a qualifying offer to Nick Haig. There you go. So we're here in free agency. And one guy who we, I think we really need to go after is Brett Pesci. He's an 81 overall. And he's a depth defenseman. He's not asking for much at all. He's asking for pretty much the minimum contract. Because as you take a look here, he has not played a single game NHL or AHL in the past two years and he's still somehow an 81 overall I think we need to offer this guy because again he, this is pretty much as cheap as they come I think if we can get him for one mil for two years 
that would be a steal for Brad Pesci. Even if he's only a seventh defenseman, that would be great. And another guy who we are going to sign for our defensive core, Madison Bowie. He's looking for $3.1 million, and he had an incredible amount of hits for only 21 minutes of ice time. I mean, that's a lot of ice time, but, you know, it's still a good amount of hits that I think we need. And he doesn't turn over the puck too much compared to how many how many times he takes it away. It's roughly a 2-to-1 ratio, which is what I'm looking for in a defenseman. Over 100 blocks, and overall, looks pretty solid. He was a plus 15 last year, and we definitely need some more guys who are capable of being plus, because I don't know if you guys saw, but beyond our first line, there weren't too many guys who were actually a plus on this team last year. So we're going to offer him, he's already had two offers, so we'll offer him 3.5 for two years. Hopefully that does it. And hopefully we also are not going over the maximum salary cap. So let us simulate ahead. Uh, well, actually, there is one more thing that we have to do before we simulate ahead. We do have to get a couple of new scouts because there was one who I decided to release. And I believe that would have been from Europe. The one who was in the DEL for us. Yeah, we need a new European scout. But other than that, I think we are set to go. So there you go. Brett Pesci has joined your New Jersey Devils. And as has Madison Bowie. So one more thing we do need to do before moving on to the preseason is trade Nick Haig because obviously we qualified him as an RFA and he, we just can't afford him. He's way too expensive for his overall. I mean, he is an 82 overall, so maybe that 79 was just as a result of the morale or his performances. But still, we can't afford him now. And we also signed Bowie. We signed Pesci. There's no need to have him around anymore. And we could also get a couple of picks back for him from the Chicago Blackhawks because they are, obviously, they picked first overall this past draft. They got that medium franchise forward in Cali Dahl. And they have almost no defense. They have Boquist, but that's about it. They have Cole, who's getting up there in age. They have Hutton, who's in his 30s as well. Beyond that, they don't have too much NHL experience because they have they have B. Schneider, they have Braden Schneider, they have Alex Vlasic. Not much beyond that, and then Bulkvist. So we will be trading them Nick Haig for two seconds for this year, and we are a little far off. So we'll take that second off, and we'll get a third for next year in there. Let's try that. Second for this year and a third for next year. That'll work. And we have a trade to Winnipeg. We'll be Pedersen and Stone, Marcus Pedersen to be specific, and also Michael Stone. Then to San Jose will be two second round picks. And we have another trade to Colorado. We'll be e. Rodrig Evan Rodriguez and two thirds. And to the Rangers will be Carlson and DeLuca. So here are the lines for the start of year number one. First line, we have Hughes, Heischer, and Hall. As per last year, that worked out very well. I mean, all of them, at least a point per game, I believe. He sure had a career year with 89 points on the season. Definitely, definitely got to keep that line together. The second line will stay the same as what it was at the end of last year. Brat Boquist, who's now up to an 85, and Gusev. The third line, unfortunately, Lundell did not grow at all over the offseason once again, so I'm thinking he's stuck around an 83. But the good news is that even though he's not really developing offensively, he's still a really good defensive forward, so he is still definitely a core part of this team on the third line with Beijing and Bellows. And the fourth line is Dubé, Zaka, and Paul Mary. On defense, you have Falk and Severson. And then the second pair will be Vukojevic with Subban. I feel like Subban could really benefit from playing with someone like Vukojevic and Ty Smith down there with Madison Bowie. So that leaves Mr. <laughs> Brett Pesci as the scratch, the continuing his NHL inactivity over the past three, almost three years. And then Fabian Zetterland is our extra forward. The power play, Hall, Hughes, and Heischer with Falk and Paul Mary pretty much replicating the top six lines from the five on five. Then you have Rat Boakvist and Gusev with Bayesian and Subban. Format power play, basically the same. The penalty kill is Heischer, Dubé, Severson, and Bowie. Then you have Lundell, Palmieri, Subban, and Vukovic. So Palmieri, to make up for his fourth line time, is getting both power play and penalty kill. And then the three-man penalty kill is obviously mostly the same, except without the wingers. Four on four, you have Hughes, Hall, Severson, and Falk. Heischer, Gusev, Subban, and Vukovic. 
Lundell, Bratt, Bowie, and Smith. Then on the three on three, you have Hughes, Hall, and Falk. Heesher, Gusev, and Severson. Lundell, Bajan, and Subban. Extra attackers, Heesher, and Lundell. Shootout, Hughes, Hall, Heesher, Gusev, Bratt. And in goal, you have Grubauer and Leonard. Scratched, of course, are Zetterland and Pesci. So there you go. There is the year five offseason. And in the next one, we will get started with year number six. Let me know what you guys think of the changes that we made. And I'll see you guys in the next one.